Welcome, welcome, welcome. It is Saturday morning, so you know it's time for another live edition of The Extra Point. We got a full court press going on in the booth today. We got Tasha T. Sizzle in the house. We got Michigan Mike, Michael Hasso coming from the AAC in the house. And we have a very special guest today. This young man is my adopted nephew. He's a book football player. He's a basketball player. He's a rapper. He's a producer. He's a corporate monster. That's my nephew, Mr. No Stopping Jay in the house. How's it going today? No Stopping. Good, it's good, it's good. How y'all doing? How y'all doing? Doing well. Now, this has been, what, a year in the making? So, yeah. you know, I'm fired up this morning. I've been trying to get you on for a whole year, and finally the stars align, and we have some good topics to talk about because your boys are in the finals. We'll get to that in just a second. Good to have Mike back in the house. Good to see the first lady of sports, Tasha T. Sizzle, glistening on this Saturday morning. Now, Jay? Every first-time guest must sit in that chair and play a game called This or That. It's a way to get the, the people to know a little bit about you before we hit you with the heavy sports stuff. All right, so I'm going to give you two options. You can only pick one. You ready to play? All right, let's do it. All right, ranch or hot sauce? Uh, ranch. What? The Texas boy. Mike, Mike, he family, ain't he? He family. I don't, I don't, I don't do the spicy stuff, man. I can't do it. Is that an athlete taking care of my body as the temple type thing, man? Kind of, yeah, but I just I just can't do the spices, man. Hey, Team Ranch over here. Look at Tasha's face. I love it. We're starting oh, off. Sorry, off. Sorry. All right. Private plane or private yacht? Plane. Can't do the yeah. water. Yeah. Can't do the water. Okay. Grammy Award or Super Bowl ring? Coming from an athlete, I have to do Super Bowl. But what about as a rapper? I'm Super really Bowl, huh? I'm really not. I'm not really worried about a Grammy. I'd rather win a, win a ring first. I like your answers already. Okay, well, let's go here then. Stefan Diggs or Trayvon Diggs? Come on, Stephon man. Diggs. I'm on the offensive side of the ball, baby. I got to go Stefan. That's my favorite player. Now, just to give you all some a backdrop on why I asked that, and I've been waiting to ask you this because he's a Cowboys fan that walks around the office in a Stefan Diggs jersey. Stefan Diggs has been my favorite player since he was in high school pretty much, so. I've been following him since then. So when he got drafted to Minnesota, I was like, oh, okay. And then he went to the Bills. I was like, that's more, you know, respectable, understandable. Uh, I got a couple of Bills, fam Bills fans. Y'all get Maryland games down there? Say that again? Y'all get Maryland games down there? No, but, I mean, we got illegal streams. I'm sorry. But <laughs> look, look, say less, nephew. Say less. Don't don't, don't let the – because people are going to be hitting you up in your inbox for the for the link to yeah, that. Man. All right. Yeah. Oh. And speaking of Stefan Diggs, your game mimics him as far as your route running and size and stature on your highlight reel. So, um, good comp there. Xbox or PS5? PS5 all the way, man. Mm -hmm. right. Drake yes. or K-Dot? You got to go with Drake. Don't get me wrong. You Don't get me wrong. How you log out of this show? <laughs> Do not get me wrong. Do not get me wrong. Kendrick Lamar is a different breed. No, he's not. But when you look at the past 10 years, man, it's been Drake. And it won't. I don't think it'll ever change. Whatever. Okay. I love this already. Okay. IG or TikTok? Instagram. Okay. And last but not least, Michael Jordan or Mr. Faux, Faux, Faux? Four championships, four MVPs, and 40,000 points. Mr. LeBron. And 10 losses. James. Stop it. <sighs> Why is it taking you so long? You know the answer. You gotta go. You gotta go, MJ, man. Thanks. What? See, you have redeemed it in my eyes. I have exercised the demon. This place is clear. <laughs> Jay, we're gonna talk about this next time I see you in these streets. I was just about to say that this young man right here is TEP certified. So if you see him walking around these DFW streets, you don't want no smoke because Auntie and Uncles. Will come a calling. We don't. We don't play like that. You know. Wait a minute. Before you go any further, the fact that you caught on to what I was saying and said this place is yeah. clear. Yeah, Jalen, you got to get up on your '90s movies in order to, to fully <laughs> rock with us. Good morning, A. P. Coulter. All right, so let's get right to it. You see, Mister Michigan Mike rocking the, the the Mavs jersey. Can you go ahead and fall back a little bit? Who's that? Who's that? You got on the on the chest area right there, Mike. It's dirt. It's dirt. We're going to talk about Dirk Dillinger here in just a second, but 
we got a finals matchup, y'all, and it's just as juicy as a Texas steak that's not overcooked. We got the Boston Celtics and the Dallas Mavericks colliding starting Thursday night, game one in the Garden on ABC. Let's start with this. Jay, Mike, how, how you living down here as Dallas sports fans? Is, is this the, the, the greatest run of Dallas sports that you can remember? Yeah, I would say so for sure. Uh, it's pretty stressful, though. I mean, like you got the good side of the Mavs, like, well, we're going to win this series. And then you got the Stars playing over here, like, man, come on. You go up 2-0 and then you end up losing like 4-2. Come on. It's just stressful. Jay? I mean, yeah, you got to think about it. Rangers just won last season. Stars and Mavs are in the, you know, they're in the finals. Or oh, the, the Mavs are in the finals. The, the Stars are almost there. Stars uh, will be there. I just I, – I called it at the beginning of the year. I said the Mavs were going to the finals this year. Once they once they got – you know, after last year, they they just – they didn't make it in the play-in. They didn't make it in the playoffs. So, I was like, they're going to make it to the to the finals. And then when I found out that they were playing the Wolves, I was like, yeah, we're going to beat them in five. Called it. And I got them beating the Celtics in six. Celtics mm. in six. I hear you now. This is true because I banged on him last year. When they sat Luke and them and tanked to 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 not go into the play, and I was on your neck about that, and you did say that y'all were gonna bounce back, and y'all did. So glad to have you on this week. But the first lady of sports, this lady's first. We got to start with T Sizzle. T Sizzle, let's play a game of this or that NBA Finals edition. Jason Kidd or Joe Mazzulla? How you okay? Just for all appearance purposes. Y'all know I'm going to always bet on black. I know Jason Kidd may be a little parquet in color. So this is a tough one for me. Because y'all know I love J. Kidd. I love Jason Kidd. Uh, don't really know too much about Missoula, but I mean, what he has done when he took over from old Coach Freak Nasty. Super Freak Nasty. <laughs> don't put a battery in her back. Please. <laughs> uh man, I don't know. Uh I'm going I'm let me be honest. I'm gonna have to go with Jason Kidd on that. Because you got say, the, taking you too long on that one because uh because you got the you got the, the fact that he was a player, right? And he has coached and everywhere he's coached, pretty much he's been successful. And we all know what he did on the course. So I'm just really I'm gonna have to get it to Jason Kidd. Mike. Yeah, I'm going to agree. I mean, he really did help out um, as the assistant coach with the Lakers bubble team uh, with that kind of asterisk championship. Uh, I'm going to go with his success. He also has success with the Mavs just in general. He knows how, you know, Cuban works, the ownership works. Um, he's starting to figure out Luca a little bit better. He's like, oh, okay, you just need someone who's been there, done that, and a player. Okay, insert Kyrie. Um, yeah, I'm going to go with Jason Kidd. Jay, uh, it's I mean it's undisputed. You got to go, Jason Kidd, man. He he knows what he's doing. Obviously, he was a a monster when he played. Um, so I'm obviously gonna go, Jason Kidd here. I like Jason Kidd as well. It's something about point guards to make great basketball coaches. Not sure why that is, but don't sleep on Missoula. He's done a phenomenal job. But when you make it out of the Western Conference, that just speaks volumes. That I mean, so I, I got to give that notch. Okay. Is this this one should be closer than I think it's going to be with the panel? Jay, we're going to start with you. Kyrie and Luca or the law officers of Tatum and Brown? I'm going. Ky I'm going Kyrie and Luca all the way. Mike, I just Next. want you to be able to say it on wax. Yep, yep, yeah. I got Kyrie. I got Kyrie, Luca. T yeah. mm -hmm. Um, I think you all are disrespecting the law officers of Tatum and Brown. No, y'all are disrespecting them. Stop. Nobody no disrespect. disrespecting it's them. Mm -hmm. It's disrespect. No one's disrespecting them. We all know what Luca can do. There are debates now as if Luca is the best player in the league right he now. Is. Uh, now that Kyrie is back to being the Kyrie from New York, the Kyrie when he set out that year, Duke, the Kyrie when he was at with uh Cleveland, as Uncle far Drew as Kyrie. here. You're not going to give me a Jalen Brown who has been balling out of control and a yes, Jason yeah. Tatum over them. It's, it's not going to happen. I want to give some credit to the defensive side of the ball. Jalen Brown is a, is a monster. 
that matchup between Jalen Brown and, and, and Luca is going to be something spectacular to watch. We'll get into the to the skinny on that. I'm going with the law office of Tatum and Brown because of what they do on the defensive side. Did I just get a shoe from No Stopping Jay? Baby, I mean, I'm going to I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna give you a fact right here. Yeah, Come go on. ahead. Go ahead. Over the span of the playoffs, players that are being guarded by Luka have shot under 41%. That is what I was just getting ready to – who you – which one of them can guard Luka? That was – that's what I was going to ask. See, so you got to think about Kyrie. Whenever he got switched on the Ant, did he score? No. Whenever Ant got switched on the Kyrie, did Kyrie score? Yes. Well, Ant made the fatal mistake of calling out Kyrie Irving, Mr. Uh, Rucker Park himself. When he's talking about some, I got Kyrie. You know he woke up out of the bed with that. Like, oh, you do? Yeah. Kyrie gave him a Undertaker. Yeah. Yes. That, that wasn't trash talk. I mean, in the grand scheme of things, it was not. But we all know in a locker room, he was like, did he just call me out? Is, is, right. this, is he coming for me? Right, right. Because because Kyrie sent for him and sent his ass home. All right. Who has the better supporting cast? We're going to start with you, Tasha. You like Boston supporting cast outside of the big two or Dallas the supporting cast? I like Dallas because I'm I'm really shocked at what uh, PJ, I call him PJ Renner. If you know, you know. Stop it. I just uh, really think that a lot of times when you are put in a different situation where you are pushed somewhere where you can feel like you can actually thrive, right. you, you thrive. Just him alone I, I wasn't expecting him to be that type of player. Uh, I'm just going to start with him, but I like overall, I like the Mavs. I, it just goes down to coaching with me because I really think the Mavs have better coaching from for the players who are not supposed to be the stars. If that they, makes have, sense. they have stepped up and they've been phenomenal. The, I, I, the, the bigs have been phenomenal with Gafford and with Lively. Glad to see that he's back and, and he wasn't permanently injured. With a couple of those cheap shots, you saw they tried to knock him back out again, Jay. I, mm -hmm. But then I can't take away from Jeru Holiday. You sure and, can't. And what's the the kid White? Well, I don't I remember his Jared first. White. Name. I mean, I don't when know. Brother started losing his lettuce. Yeah, he every, becomes every, a minister out there on the court. Every, that's what that's what took LeBron over the top when he started losing that, that yeah. little that little ridge. That, that's that, it. When, when he went bald, he just got better. He got better. It, it's a, it awakes the beast in you. Trust me, I know. It, you get you get this you get this aggression that you're gonna take it out on somebody. And if you got a good head of lettuce, I'm I'm checking you. You you go you're gonna feel the wrath. So Mike, enjoy it. For, and hopefully you go to your grave with your lettuce. You too, Jalen. With the shag. Well, you gotta he, he has a, a good head of a lettuce itself. He told y'all the shag is back in, man. That's the thing. I told you. Mike, who has the better? Because I know you're gonna you're gonna be keeping real with me. Who has the better supporting cast? Um, I'm gonna go with consistency. You know, I like consistency. I'm gonna go with Dallas being consistent. If we go talent, yeah, I'm gonna go Boston right now. But like this young talent and consistent talent that Dallas has, went from the the centers and just coming off the bench, just replacing. We got Lively. Like they're just they just switch in and they just do the same their job. They the aggression is there. I think Boston has a lot of injuries that like. They're a little soft, and I think that came from Porzingis. You know, maybe that's just me being salty from that trade um, back in day one. But, yeah, I, I'm going to go with Dallas on this one. But, Mike, I said that, I think was it last week when we were talking about the bigs, um, how Dallas has, you know, people that can match up with the bigs of Minnesota. So, Mike, everything you're saying is is is, is correct. Yeah. Jay. They got that dog in them. Um, I'm, I'm going to go Dallas for sure. Because uh, when you think about it, you have – I'm going to say this. You have two and a half people on the Dallas Mavericks starting lineup that can guard one through five. Um, I say two and a half because you have PJ and Derek. They can guard, you know, three through five, one, one and two. And then you also have Kyrie, who's very underrated on defense. He will step up and guard one through four if he needs to. He's not afraid of that. Um, also, just on the offensive side of the ball, Jaden Hardy can hoof, man. Yes, he can. Yes, Come he on, can. Man. They didn't hardly yes, can, but at the same time, when we go into that second and third lineup, if Drew Holiday's still on the court, it's going to be hard to score because Drew Holiday will lock up anybody. Mm -hmm. He will. He is the sheriff. Is like but, what I like to call him. 
Y'all, I'm going to bring some balance and some levity to this conversation. Mm -hmm. Boston has the better supporting cast and is not really close. If you, if you, you, When you put Chris Stapps Porzingis back into the lineup, and when we, we say we're supporting First cast, of all. No, we, no, Chris Stapps Porzingis, when he comes back to the lineup, he is going to be able to pull one of those bigs, either Gafford or Lively, out of the paint. Rudy Gobert would, could not pull any of them out of the paint. You set the high pick and roll with Chris Stapps Porzingis, and you have to stay out there because he will nail the three-point shot. He will be there. Is, is, is Chris Stapps in? That, he ain't played in a month. And when he does yeah. play, he plays for two seconds. Wayne Donaldson checking in, and he is a basketball referee. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna take him at his word. And, yeah, but and, we said happy that. belated birthday to you, Coop. Boston well, has I said better, players, better players. They're just not as consistent, right? Yeah, like they, even Wayne said, like, well, that they haven't even gone to six them. games. They haven't gone to six games. They <laughs> I mean, who they, they play? They they play we anybody. just want to just put that out there. They they played, have not played a team that has been 100. percent They played Miami right. without Jimmy. Cleveland, no Don. I could, I could have won four games. No Giannis. Well, yeah. You, well, you a three and D guy. You know what I'm saying? You, 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 Derek Lively. Can you dunk? <laughs> I wish. Oh, okay. All right. All right. I'm I, telling I, you. Five eleven. On a good day, like that, man. Rip your five eleven. I might, I might <laughs> put it in there. Okay. <laughs> All right. Now I've seen your basketball highlights. You, he will clamp you down on the on the on the uh defensive side of the ball. And I saw you throw, catch, and run. I think okay. you, I think I think it's in you. <laughs> right, right, right. Um, y'all gonna put some respect on Boston. Cause right now I see now the kid the kids call it glazing on Instagram. I hope I'm saying this right. Y'all doing a lot of Mavs glazing right now. Don't laugh at me. You know, you know, I I, I just looked that up on Instagram. Y'all doing a lot of glazing for the Mavs right now. Right, I was like, glazing? <laughs> what does that mean? <laughs> I learned that during the Drake beef because I was I got called a glazer for a reel that I posted about Kendrick Lamar being trash. And they was like, why are you glazing a pedo? <laughs> 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 oh, Drake's a pedophile or not? Shouts out. Milton Thomas says Celtics in five C. Now this guy was a hooper. I hooped with him back in the early nineties. This guy was physical. He played in the paint. He knows what time it is. Um, and good morning mm -hmm. to you, Milton Thomas. Congratulations to your daughter too, who was valedictorian of her high school class. That gives a shout out. Shout hey, out. out. Circumstance. He said, "I'm a." He said, "Uh, Milton, I'm gonna throw a potato, a tomato at you." Yeah, it, it's it, okay. <laughs> now people are choosing sides. I love a matchup when people choose sides. And this is a, a side-choosing, juicy matchup we got right here. All right, let's get to it. Tasha, who wins, Boston or Dallas? Damn. I'm not yeah. going to lie. Don't lie. Everything in me wants Dallas to win. But? I just think the Celtics going to do it. Everything in me wants Dallas to win, but I just, I just think the Celtics are gonna do it. Hey, Wayne agrees with you. He says Tatum scares me, but Boston in seven. Coop, stick around. I got some some very polarizing questions I want to get y'all's thoughts on. Mike, how many do the Mavs win in? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, I definitely think this goes to Game Seven. I think these are two huge markets, and NBA yeah. can't pass this up. I think this yeah. is going to Game Seven. You going wait a minute, Dallas Mike? You going script on us? You going script? Oh yeah, hundred percent. Please, basketball gods. The fact that take over. The fact that Dallas games. blew Minnesota out the way they did, yeah. they started writing that script right there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because y'all because y'all messed up the church's money. Because I was supposed to be watching a game tonight on TNT at eight thirty. What the hell am I supposed to watch tonight? I told y'all <laughs> to, to to throw that uh, game and take it. The is on tonight. Better watch uh, the WNBA. <laughs> The WFL yeah. Caitlin play at 11. What am I going to do tonight? No, nah, I'm only watching Caitlin and Angel Clark. Yeah, I mean, uh, Angel Reese, I'm sorry. Um, so they play at 11 a.m. I, I don't know what I'm going to watch tonight. He says, if Dallas loses, I'm going to be pissed. Y'all know I hate Boston. Um, now, hey, shouts out. TSU in the house. Dallas in seven. Okay. So we're getting some levity. Uncle Langston checking in. Said, sup, Irvin wins and critics are quiet only for a second. We're about to get into that, Langston. Way to segue us. Jay, I want to get you on wax. Who wins and how many games? Mavs and six. Oh, so you you going MJ with it. You saying we're not even getting to a game seven, huh? Six. I'm telling you, I'm gonna tell you why we're gonna win in six. Please do. Luca is dropping more than 33 for every game. 
But what about Kai? Kyrie's gonna hoop. Kyrie gonna do what he does. He's hooping in Boston. First two games. You know they hate him. He hates them. Is he gonna go in with a sage again? And he gonna stand on the leprechaun and Jay, you done fired up the goon squad now. Now, now, hey, they they play no games. They throw stones, rocks, tomatoes, chairs. Boo, <laughs> hiss. But look, hey. they missed you, Mike. You done woke up the crowd. <laughs> you tripping, Jay? Look, Boston has team defense. Now, I saw a stat since y'all want to do stats this morning that Boston has only blitzed opponents on like 1.3% of their defensive possessions, the second fewest in the league. Now, we saw a couple of different teams try to blitz Luka to no avail. But can you just guard him straight up? Do You you can't just guard Luka straight up, can you, Tasha? You can't. Luka is, again, to Jay's point, you can throw the kitchen sink, the stove, the damn refrigerator. And the air Luka. fryer. Yeah, and that air fryer at Luka. That's going to leave Kyrie to cook. That's going to leave P.J. White. I mean, you know, like I said, you, you throwing it to P.J. on, you know, on the side. He's shooting. He's making buckets. Mm -hmm. You can put everything on Luka, but Dallas still has supporting staff or team, you know, team members that can score. Even, you know, it. I don't even – now, Luka will have to score for Dallas to win. Oh, and he will. Yeah, you know, and he, feels, he, he he could score twenty five points in a wheelchair, but like to, it's just to that defense. Still, like I said, everything in me wants Dallas to win. I just really think the Celtics will. It's almost as if the the way that the NBA is set up, you have to hit your head on the door before you get to open it. We saw it with all the greats. You know, Magic lost the first time. Bird Bird lost the first time to the 76ers. Uh, MJ was having problems with the Pistons before he pushed through. But we got two. Excuse me, two young superstars that will get their first ring. Now, Wayne says Boston will hard double those ball screens. Here's my 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 question about that, Jay and, and Mike. We saw teams do that. And then you leave a, a Jaden Hardy in the corner. You leave a P.J. Washington yeah. to toss this point in the corner. You leave a Tim Hardaway Jr. who's been on the back of a milk carton, but in the in the, the <laughs> Clipper series. Yeah, you see him since that uh, Final Four game in, um, against Louisville. Right, stop. Yeah. That was a block. Oh, line. Line. Not line. That was a block. And Derek Jones, what the hell got into Derek Jones? What are they serving in the text mix down here in Dallas? Because he was not this efficient as any happens. of his other 10 teams. That's what happens when Luca passes you the ball. You have no choice but to make it. I tell people yeah. this all the time. I tell people this all the time. If Luca passes you the ball in the corner, eight times out of 10, you are wide open. And all oh, you have to do is open. All you have to do is make it. That's your job. Against Minnesota, to your point, they were so wide open in the corner that people didn't even run out. Wide open. Out. They didn't have enough time. They was like, I yeah, Kyrie are wide open. Like, what y'all doing? <laughs> right. Who leaves him wide open? <laughs> the way that, that Jason Kidd, to y'all's point about coach, because I agree with y'all that I take Kidd over Missoula, the way that Jason Kidd put Minnesota in a terrible bind, they ran that pick and roll with Gafford and, and Lively hitting to the basket. When they would step out on the on the three point shooters, they were getting alley oops like forty eight, for fifty. They looking like Lob City remix. But when they started collapsing the paint, Lively open, Hardy open, Washington mm -hmm. open. Like what? Whatever you did, it didn't work. So like Boston has a great defense, especially in their backcourt with White and with Holiday, but. You can't guard Kyrie man to man. You can't guard Luca man to man. This is the most unfair backcourt in the history of the but NBA. Me, but let me ask you a question. We all know that coaches tend to get fired when players don't, in my opinion, play right or do what the hell they're supposed to be doing. So, again, does this come – the first question you ask, which coach do we have, does this series come down to coaching or players? One of you two jump in and answer that. Um, go ahead, Mike. Yeah, that's a good question. Um, it I, is. I, I, I think, about that. in my opinion, I think it's going to come down to the coaching. Um, because, like what Paul said, we Mavs are making adjustments, and it was like, oh man, we didn't plan for this. And it, it right. obviously showed they were just same play, same play, same play. It's almost yeah. like a Madden play. If you're like, oh, okay, cool, this is going to be open, this is going to be open, it's the same thing. Screen pass, Mike. Um, yeah, so I'm going to say I could see – yeah, yeah, you love that screen pass. Uh, I could see 
I could see Dallas losing game one just so that they can make adjustments for the rest of the series. Um, I don't want that to happen, but I could see that happening. But it's going to come down to the Boston coaching staff for sure. I think I, I agree. Now, Mike, you talked me into into coaching on that one because how do you adjust to Dallas's adjustments? Dallas has a plan B, a plan C, a plan D, and all of their role players are stepping up. Um, Wayne says they will switch uh, to multiple defenses. They also can, can switch one through five. That is key, being able to switch one through five because Minnesota couldn't do that. You saw what you saw. Uh, what was that guy's name? The guy who who got switched off of Luca in that final uh, play, and Gobert wound up on Luca. How his face? They showed his face like ah, that's, that's yeah. Like, he's like, like Dang. he knew it was over. <laughs> um, so we shall we we shall see. Okay, so let let me let me let me back in that. Back in there. We're saying Jason Kidd is. We all said Jason Kidd is the better coach. But in this situation, what put? Can you put up what Wayne said again? In that situation, do you not think that Mizuno's going to have those boys coached up to? to I do, no. I do, because yeah. this isn't their first rodeo. They're not some some right. startup. Well, that's team. why They've I'm been saying, on the like for said, That's why I'm picking Boston. Well, that's kinda, why I think Jason Kidd is a better coach, and he'll make the adjustment to the adjustment. It's chess at this point. Yeah, he certainly did that to Minnesota. He certainly did that. Go ahead, Jay. Um, I'm not the one that believes in finals finals experience. It's basketball, bro. You do what you do to win the ring. I mean, that's I feel like experience does have a you do, experience does have a factor, but at the same time, I feel like you just got hoop. I mean, at this at the end of the day, that, that that's what it comes down to. It doesn't come down to experience. I think I alluded to that a couple of weeks ago or something. I was mm-hmm. like, you know, you got people who've never been here before, but when you're there, it's like you you just got to do what you got to do. Got to throw that all out the window. I don't, you know. I don't believe in experience either. However, I do believe in endurance and conditioning yeah. and mental. And I think at this point, it'll show for sure. You saw it in Minnesota. They were like gas game one. Yeah. The, the, the pressure is real. Go ahead. Go ahead, Jay. And I, I agree with what he just said. The pressure is real. Trust me. I understand. I've been to many, you know, championships. I, I understand how that works. Um, I, I agree with that. And that's, that's, that's what scares me is the pressure of just being, not being able to, to make shots, and if you let the Celtics go on a run, you might as well go ahead and mark that game up. Because I've watched games where the Celtics will lock up on D and then go on a run. The game's over in the second, and third quarter. Yeah. It, um, Mike, you said conditioning. Do you worry about Luca going this, going as far as he's ever gone with him being so banged up early in the in the playoffs? Do you worry about his conditioning nah. if this goes? Six, seven games? Nah, if, if he had conditioning problems, he would have been done second series, um, at least in the Minnesota. That You see his dog come out, and he's like, no, nah, I'm going to finish this. This is mine. Um, I don't think I don't think Luka's going to be the reason why, if the Mavs do lose, I don't think it's going to be Luka's fault. No, I mean, Luka was out there balling when I was calling him fat ass, and he, he's a lot <laughs> sleeker than he has been in the past. If your star player is the alpha dog, and he's your best player and your most productive player. To Jay's point, you're gonna fall in line. If I'm wide open on the on the on the court in the corner, I'm gonna hit eight out of ten because of his confidence. Because he's looking at me and mad dogging me. The best feeling in the world is when you make a play and your teammates mad dog you or give you that mush to the head. Like, all right, bro, that's what we needed. They were outclassed. Minnesota was. They were outboxed. They were out jabbed, and they got hit with the haymakers. And back to the experience part, though. Dallas really has the experience there. Luca been playing against 30 year olds since he was 13. He's been right, playing in Euro champions since he was 13 years old. He's some kind of child labor laws over there in Slovenia. Where he was locking up Westbrook at 13. Yes, <laughs> basketball Jesus, like but passing out water and wine at 12. <laughs> Luca ain't gonna be scared of no pressure. To y'all's point, and Kyrie, come on, man. Yeah. He 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 he. We're gonna get to Kyrie yeah. in just a second. Okay, so we, we got our pick. I knew that it was gonna be hard to get out of that that segment. Great, great job. But let's 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 go with the three most polarizing superstars in this one. We're gonna go Kyrie, Luca, and Tatum. Let's start with Luca. Mike, does Luca need to win a championship to surpass Dirk Nowitzki as the best player in Mavs history? Uh, I take this in a two part question or kind of a two question. I think you're asking one question, but really asking another. Is he the most? Ta- is he more talented than Dirk right now? The they're in two different positions, and in my, in my mind, I mean, he's more athletic for sure than Dirk. 
Now, we're also trying to compare what Dirk did at his end of the career, which he hit the, you know, he won the finals towards the end. That's a lot of development there. Luka's still young. So I think Luka will be more talented than Dirk. Does he need a championship to be on the same caliber and then eventually surpass? Yes, he definitely needs a championship in Dallas. Okay, that's that's where I want to go with it because one man got a, a, a statue out there and played for 20 years and showed up to the that was a year. tough. That was a tough championship, too. Right. He went through, he he knocked off the two-time defending champion Lakers in a sweep. Then he went and knocked off the the, the new dream team, which was the Heat. Um, Jay, can Luca surpass Dirk without a chip? No. In your eyes. No. Because the, the playoff run that he had was ridiculous. Yeah, you said they played the Thunder. I mean, they, they played the, the uh, Lakers. They played the Thunder. But the first, the the, the, the way, I, I was obviously like 11 when the series was going on. <laughs> oh, my God. You you were 11 in 2011? Yeah. Damn. Damn. <laughs> that just made well, my back hurt. Well, my gray hair just popped out all over <laughs> after hearing that statement. Where's my life alert? Go ahead, Jay. <laughs> but my back hurts now. Um, <laughs> I feel like the way they played against the Lakers was like really shows how dominant Dirk was. Every time he got the ball in the post, all five eyes went there. I feel like it's the same thing for Luca. But at the same time, I feel like Luca, he's gonna need to ring. He's gonna need a ring to surpass Dirk. Yeah, uh, yeah, I agree. Tasha, do you agree? Yeah, uh, uh, because. I mean, I even take it back to the Adrian Dantley days. You know how – and well, who was the one with the curl? Was that Michael Finley that had the Jerry curl? He yeah. had to face off. He had the, 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 the TWA, the teeny weeny afro. I mean, like, you know, I go back to those days when, when the Mavericks were terrible, but we still watched it because of those players. I mean, Alex English even played there, but I, I remember Alex English more being with uh, Denver than with Dallas. But, man, Dirk came in. Dirk came over. Dirk is just – the man like he and like i said you know i've been sold on dirt and it was way before he came out with that four plate when i saw him walk up with the four plate and i saw him with a dashiki on in the off season i was like no he built different like <laughs> like he built different and the way he stared down that heat team who we had all championed as the greatest team assembled of all time he didn't have a Kyrie. Mm-hmm. he didn't have two bigs he had one in tyson chandler and tyson chandler couldn't shoot Jason Terry was serviceable, but he was four foot tall. And he took on the, the big three himself and put them. And Jason Terry was, was about 36. How old was Jason Terry in that? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Dirk, what Dirk did, and and, and, I, and Mike made a, a good point as far as Luca coming in at the end of Dirk's career, people looking at Dirk as, oh, the the the, the recliner chair. Go farewell to her, Dirk. No, no, no. Go back but, to short haircut, Dirk. When, when, uh, when, uh, your boy from the uh, from the Suns was still there. And, but you know, and I still don't think there. even if he wins this, I don't think he'll surpass Dirk. That's uh, a fair. That's a fair assessment. That's because fair I mean, assessment. and it also it makes me. I mean, now of course we're comparing apples and oranges because no one. I mean, I still think Kobe is number two. Uh, and this is from somebody who's not a Kobe fan. Yeah. You have people who, even if LeBron James wins a championship, not in the bubble, who are not going to say that LeBron James is, is, is the Lakers' savior, even though LeBron James is accomplished. LeBron James comes with his own cadre of awards and accolades and has won multiple championships. If he wins, they're not going to say, oh, he's better than Kobe. Yeah. Mm, we got a LeBron shade right there. No, 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 and it's not LeBron, LeBron shade because no, no, LeBron no, no. no I'm talking about the comment. With the LeBron shade. No, what you yeah. said was valid. He said, "Wasn't that when your goat was being checked by JJ Barrera? You misspelled the. <laughs> it was when the goat was being checked by JJ Barrera. And then what happened the year after that, and after that, and after that? Um, didn't Mark Cuban pull the pin out the hand grenade? Yep, sure did. And blow up that team." We ain't heard a peep yeah. out of them since. Yo. It started with Tyson Chandler. We're like, wait, what happened? What? Wait. Oh, okay. But I like how you just getting away from from what I just said. But that's cool. Wait a minute. What? What, what you what about Kobe and, and and the King? I'm sorry. I was. No, I had to she, she's saying she's saying that these accomplishments, like it, just because you're making like winning another ship, doesn't mean that it's going to surpass you a certain place. You could say like LeBron 
if that's you give LeBron another championship, he's not surpassing MJ. Like that's just y'all way of couching to cover up for MJ. When you look, no, at I the- didn't even, but I didn't even bring up Michael Jordan. I said Kobe Bryant. I said five, Kobe Bean Bryant. Man. Kobe he's, can't even lace. He's not LeBron. even number two. Ooh, may he rest in peace. Don't no, don't get me sidetracked here and fight in front of company. Hey, Kobe was a, Kobe was a bad man. Yeah. How many he got? Five of those things? Five, right? I'm, oh, I'm with Tasha on oh. this one. My my goat, my goat uh, thermometer or whatever measurement is gonna be like that dog. That dog. Kobe had it, MJ had it, LeBron just don't have that. What do you mean LeBron just don't have that? Why? Because he ain't Le- out in Colorado. No, no, Dirk, Dirk has more of a dog than LeBron does. Not today. Not today. We're not Why? doing it. Why? Look, look. When Wake me up when one of those two beat a 73-win team that was stacked to the high heavens. Wake me up when any of them when any of them are 39 years of age and still – decides to get some dog in him. Twin, oh, you can't – oh, so – uh, you're not a dog, but you went to 20 straight All NBA teams. How many, t- how, many shots, how many shots did again? It goes back to the shot selection with me, and we're gonna have this argument to, to we both. No, we're gonna do this in front of company. Go, go ahead, pull we your head back we in both the boat. Ten Let's toes go. up and like that man with that glide and them boots. I am not going to trust LeBron James to take a final shot for me if everything I own is on the line. The two people who had no problem. No matter who was in their face, whatever the hell was going on was Michael Jeffrey Jordan and Kobe B. Bryant. LeBron is not them. In 91, who did he pass to for the game-winning shot? LeBron is not. In 91, he passed to Paxson for the game-winning shot. Then he did it to Kerr in the next championship. Oh, he's passed that ball. And so who did LeBron pass pass it to when they was – oh, okay. Kyrie. Kyrie no, and Kyrie hit that three and, and he wasn't even ready home. for the play because the people around him wasn't no good because he wasn't making the people around him no good. Come on, J.R. Smith. 40,000. Come on, J.R. Smith. 40,000 and counting and counting. Yeah, but not, but not, but not when it, when he really needed to have it in him. It wasn't there. Next. This was Michael Jordan's eyeballs in 35. <laughs> That's they true. were gold. Yeah, it was that orange right there. There you go. Right. That he was orange, the that, that, that orange, right, orange right. glaze he had made him the goat. And I don't even like Michael Jordan, and I don't even like Kobe Bryant. I'm a Dominique Wilkins and Detroit Pistons fan. Jalen, we going to – yes, and I'm calling you by your government name because you started this fight talking about some MJ. You did that to troll me. Wait till I get to talk to Brayson next week. You're going to pay for this. Wait, I got to get Brayson on the show now because we got to bring some balance to this. Um now, come on now. Having dog doesn't define being the goat. LeBron is the goat. He Case is not the goat. Case Stop. Close. As a matter of fact, let me ask y'all this while, while I, I step away for just a second. Cavs Kyrie or Mavs Kyrie? Tasha, you up first. Which one are you taking? Oh, I'm taking the Cavs. Mike? Yeah, I'm going I'm to go. If we're going stats and, like, this player, I'm going to go with the Cavs. And he was out shooting. But it's just – it's really, man, I, I, I think I'm just because as I'm older, I can see like, man, I couldn't do what he's doing right now. Like, I can't imagine how he's revamped his career like that. So that's why it's impressive to me. I really, 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 really like Mavs Kyrie. I mean, it's just, I feel like he's just. It's, Hell, you was 11 when he was a Mavs Kyrie. Hey, oh, you no, no, two. don't get me wrong. Don't get me wrong. Before every basketball game when I was a kid, that's who I was watching. Kyrie, nobody else. I didn't watch anybody else. So I'm gonna go Cavs Kyrie because it's just like I mean when he untucked that jersey, it's over. Yeah. Hold on, y'all. I'm trying to yeah. light back on. Right? No, he, that he was, that was of blasphemy that got you right there. That was blasphemy. <laughs> um, now here's my I'm torn on this because you know Cavs Kyrie. He he made LeBron the goat with that game winning shot against uh, Golden State. He put the crown on the King's head when he stepped off that plane with the Ultimate Warrior T-shirt on in the Ultimate Troll job. When Draymond was sitting out in the parking lot crying, trying to get KD on the phone because KD was the only thing that could get them over the hump against Mr. LeBron James. And to Tasha's point, if Kyrie hadn't wanted out to go to Boston, they would have ran it back and beat their ass again. We're going to just leave that part there. That part, me and Tasha do Why do you think Kyrie went to Boston? What's the real reason why Kyrie went to Boston? Okay, I'm going to say it like uh, this is just me. This is my speculation. 
I think that he was miffed and he felt slighted and disrespected that in game yeah. five, he also scored 40 points with LeBron James. In game six, he also scored 35 points with LeBron James. In game seven, he made the game-winning shot, but the only thing they showed in the highlights was the block on Nick Wadala. Block by James. It always Dang, comes you sounded down. just like Mike Green right there. Good job by you, you, you look at all these, these singing groups that break up. Why? Because ain't nobody coming to see you, Otis. That's and that's so how he crazy. felt. He was like, if y'all ain't coming to see me, I'm gonna make myself must see. Right. Oh, that was a bar. That's gonna be on a that's gonna make a, a reel this week. That that's gonna be on that's gonna get re reposted. I like that. Um, but I'm gonna go with I love Cavs Kyrie, but for the maturity, I love Mavs Kyrie. Okay. I love this version mm -hmm. of Kyrie because his 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 insides matching his outside. And me and Mike was having an offline conversation about this, about Mike saying that he looks like he's coming from a place of peace and how, how that's it, more important than healthy. money. And he looks healthy. The way he's handling these post-game press conferences is next level leadership. The and, I way mean, and I don't mean healthy here. So if, if I'm saying healthy, y'all know what I mean. It is a she think he, yeah, she think he got a, a couple of screws loose that the mall is open, but ain't nobody in that shop. And that's we'll leave it at that. <laughs> Mavs Kyrie, because he will put up 35 in his sleep. That's true. But Mavs Kyrie embraced the fact that this is Lucas' team. This is Lucas' city. What I can do is I can help you get what you want so you can help me get what I want, which is a ring independent of LeBron James. That, and speaking of which, who does a ring most benefit this year, Luca, Kyrie, or Tatum? Tasha, I'm gonna start with you. Uh, it'll benefit Tatum because that way people can stop chirping in his ear saying that he ain't that man or he's not showing up when he needs to be there. He got to recover for Drake. Light skins is down right now. Light skins is down bad. Light skins is down bad right now. Like, 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 I love you, mama, but but y'all reeling right now. Y'all, y'all need Jason to, to come through, Mike. Stop it, I'm going to go with Luca just because he's always been in that like top player conversation, but like he don't he doesn't have a ship yet. I mean, he is younger, but like he's on that incline, right? Like there's always comparison with him and LeBron first couple years, first five but the years or whatever. I would disagree with you, Mike, is because Luca is already that man. I think like, Luca's top two whether he wins the ring or not, but like, yeah, Luca's but, already that man. He's like he's top two. Like you can't even say. Oh well, Luca didn't win the chip like people do. LeBron like that ain't gonna happen for Luca because he was giving buckets back in the bubble. But y'all, y'all don't say that was just bubble talk when he was cooking the Clippers out there in the bubble, hitting them game winners. Y'all want to count that, but you don't want to count who won the actual championship. I'm gonna digress. But Luca, uh, Luca's gonna need that chip for for his yeah. mental state. He needs yeah. a championship, and he gonna drink a keg once he win that championship. Good morning, <laughs> Miss Hastings. Good morning, Goon Squad. Jay, who has the most of game? Tatum. Uh, Kyrie, I'll say Jason Tatum, man. I mean, he's been here what three times already, two times. You go, you get to the finals. Like, oh, we made it to the finals, and then you look and you gotta play Steph Curry. Dog you know, man, you, that man. team didn't have no business beating Boston. You, Let's keep you it knew, you you. I mean, but at the same time, it's Steph Curry. He knew he was gonna win that ring after he won the Western Conference Finals against the Mavericks. He knew it was over, no matter who he played against. But I think Tatum benefits because I want to see him win a ring. When Kyrie played with the Celtics, I, I like that's you know, I, I loved watching the Celtics play because I feel like Jason Tatum and Kyrie played so well together. But yeah, the yeah. way and he said the West is reloading. Uh yeah, I understand that. But you know Josh sees and loading here in about two months. Josh sees Ja will be back with his full complement of goons. <laughs> now with, with, with Triple J, Jaron Jackson Jr., now, Dan, again. Brandon Clark. You know, if, when, when we was having a debate between John Luca, I was going with Ja. I always bet on black, but Ja don't embarrass me. He, he gonna have to no, show no, up. What, no, we're not even like Ja's not even in a Luca conversation right now. Ja's in the Ant Man conversation. Ja got to get through Ant Man and then to Luca because Luca just destroyed Ant Man, who destroyed the Joker. So there's levels to this. Like there's Luca, LeBron, uh, KD. Like he's on that level now, where your status is secure, whether you win a ring or not. But to Mike's point, winning a championship will just push him away, so far away from the competition. I think in Tatum's case, it'll back people off. Now, Wayne said something earlier that I liked. He said, they, I mean, Langston did. He said it will quiet the haters for now, or his critics. He didn't say haters. He said critics for now. Would 
would that really be the end of the redemption story if, if he walks away with a championship? Jay? Who? Kyrie. Kyrie. Hmm. Yeah, I mean, you won it without LeBron, and then you go you in. You got to get one without LeBron. Kobe needed to get one without Shaq to yeah. submit himself, in the at least in the GOAT discussion. And I, I think Kyrie like, needs one. I feel like even if he does win it without LeBron, Kyrie's going to look at it as like, He's gonna why look at child just now waking up. I'm sorry, Jay. Sasha. Why are you just now waking up? Jay, look, text her. Jay, as you were saying, <laughs> those two right there, you gotta love a mom and daughter. Um, I feel like, um, Kyrie, I mean, he's gonna be happy about it. You know, it's a ring at the same time, but I feel like at the end of the day, I feel like if he would have went to any other team, I don't think he would have been close to getting a ring. Hell no, hell no, because the thing is. We we have there's one part of the of the Kyrie redemption story that I think is overlooked. Luca has to embrace that. Luca has to embrace him being on the team and being Robin. Luca has done just as much to restore his name as his play on the court for him giving him his flowers to say, hey, look, but, all right, now you cook. Go ahead, Tasha. But also, Luca is probably the happiest man in that damn building next to Mark Cuban that he ain't got to keep carrying that, that, that bunch of bums. On his back by himself. In you say that the, the bobs, <laughs> the bobs by himself. He can in, come down the court and be like, oh, "Here, Kyrie, go to work." Yes. Yeah. Now save my stuff for the fourth quarter. Did y'all see Game Five when Luca gave him twenty in the first quarter? Kyrie gave him twenty in the second quarter. They both scored thirty-six points. Like Boston, y'all got smoked. Now I think Boston in seven is my head pick. My if I had to put money on it because I worry about. Luca's legs long term. They had a tougher road to get there. But to Wayne's point, he said the Mavs are thanking the Wolves for dismantling the Nuggets. For sure, 100%. Mm -hmm. It happened in 2011 as well. The, uh, the, 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 the Memphis Grizzlies, the core four with Zebo and Mike Conley, they knocked off the number one seed, uh, San Antonio Spurs that year as the eighth seed, which cleared them out of the Dallas's way. So Dallas had OKC, a young OKC in the, the conference championship instead of San Antonio who had swept them that year. Nice little nugget for y'all. So y'all make sure y'all see a Memphis <laughs> fan. Y'all show them love. Uh, yeah, Glow. I'm trying to sound hip because he's on the show today. Who's Is Yeah, Glow, is that how everybody say it? Oh, you say it? Dang. Y'all know Glow Rilla. Don't hate. Tasha, everybody don't tap the rooster like you. Leave her alone. Right. Y'all. She First of all, Trish, right why you put my business all out here on the street? <laughs> she said tap the rooster. <laughs> She woke me up, Jay, with some pots and pans. It, it was literally dark outside. And I jumped up like that kid meme when they from Scared Straight when they went in there yeah. and jumped that little kid up out of that prison cell. <laughs> That's how I jumped up. Like, what the hell is going on around here? She was like, I'm hungry. Yeah, take me to Chick-fil-A. <laughs> take me to Chick-fil-A. And it was Chick-fil-A. No, I uh, know. -uh, Thank Mike you, Mike. No, Mike know you. Take me to Chick-fil-A. Mike, it wasn't even Chick-fil-A. It was Jack in the Box because I wanted some um, pancakes and bacon. And she threw the shit up in my waste basket in my room a few hours later. Like, this is love right here. This is called unconditional love, all right? Now, as we proceed, let me ask you this, Jay. I'm going to start with you. Jason Tatum. Now, we, we talked Kyrie. We talked Luca. Let's talk Tatum for just a second. Jalen Brown actually won Eastern Conference MVP. As he should. Jalen Brown has the $300 million deal. Jalen Brown... If you ask in NBA circles, sounds like he's a little more respected by his peers than Tatum. You don't hear as much smoke or people discrediting him or his game. If Boston wins and Brown is the finals MVP, does that put a death knell in Tatum's quest for be, to be face of the league? <sighs> no. I say no because, I mean – I feel like Jalen Brown is 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 slightly, and when I say slightly, at times he is slightly better than Jason Tatum because it's like I feel like Jason Tatum gets in that mode where it's just pass, 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 pass. Jalen Brown gets the ball, and what does he do eight times out of ten? He goes and scores. Look, stop it because you're making Mike and Tasha's point about being a dog and not deferring. We're gonna get we're gonna move off of you real quick. Let's go. To Mike. <laughs> Uh, you already know what he just said. You're making a point against me right now. No, go ahead. Man. Finish your thought. But I, I also feel like – I can't stand I, I feel like now against the Mavericks, Jason Tatum is going to flip that switch. He's been here before. He knows what's going on. 
that's where that's where the experience comes back and, and, and it bites you because it's like I've been here. I, I already know what to do. You know what I'm saying? And I feel like he's gonna flip that switch and he's gonna average at least over 25, 26 a game. He's gonna need to too, Mike. Well, 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 well Brown, like what you said. Him. Like what you said, experience isn't really that big of a thing in the championship game. It comes down to having that dog. So, like, yeah. he's shown what he does in the championship game. He's going to lose it, and it's going to be all on him. <laughs> Man, like, Jalen, don't – I mean, uh, Tatum, don't you lose this finals and come up small. Because That's a lot of pressure. I, Tasha, was what say you? Can he say – can Brown – Let me go back to your original question and answer that. Okay. Who the hell said Jason Tatum finna be the face of the league anyway? Now you know that he is being positioned uh, as a future face of the league. I huh? didn't know that. I didn't, I didn't know that. Well, Mike, you don't watch Eastern Conference basketball. It's been so Luca for true. like. Well, that's true. That's true. <laughs> what you say, Jay? Watch the man play this year. Oh, um, hold on, wait a minute. Play? We got we, Jay. You got smoke, Jay. You just said experience doesn't matter. Wayne, that's why I said that feel alone. That's why I said experience comes back and bites you. It, it doesn't. I feel like it doesn't matter to a certain extent. Like you can't, you can't base. No, stand some, on stand on business. You can't base ex, somebody winning a finals or a playoff game off of experience. I don't. That that doesn't make sense to me. I feel like that's like the 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 thinking side of basketball. When you get into a basketball game, I'm not gonna be dribbling the ball thinking about oh he's got experience he's gonna beat me. And then you know you're not gonna win. Um, nice comeback. Nice comeback. I feel like and also when it comes to the experience, it's almost like I've been here before, so it shouldn't even bother me. I so, and I've literally went to playoff games where teams have have won years in a row, and we get there the first year and we blow them by twenty. I mean, and you also played in Texas football. We all know that's semi pro. <laughs> hey, you didn't. Like, hey, you put little Elm on a poster, didn't you? Like, damn, little Elm, little Elm, what they do to you? Okay. That, that was a game winner as well. So I feel like they they were way more experienced than what we were. So it was like when we went out there, we knew what we had to do. I feel like experience, it works to a T. It works to a certain extent. But at the same time, I feel like once you get out there, if you play your game, it'll all fall. Yeah, um, because Dirk really didn't have any finals experience when he took down Dwayne Wade, who had just won a title in 2006. So. <laughs> he swept Kobe Bryant. And they were two-time champions. Oh, Again, my. thank Memphis for that. Now, Mike Greenberg says something on ESPN this week that, that had me like, what? I don't know about this. So let me see what y'all think about this. He said, losing in five be damned that Ant-Man Anthony Edwards will have the most championships out of all the young superstars in the next 10 years. You buying or selling that, Tasha? No, I'm, I'm selling that. Mike, you selling that? You buying it? Yeah, no, nah, I ain't sell. No, nah, I ain't buying that at all. Nope. Jay, you buying or selling that? I'm selling that like a crackhead that just stole something. Okay, Zell, <laughs> Felicia, come on. Which one was the crackhead? You putting, on, you putting that that thought on that take on Timu? <laughs> come on, man. <laughs> Timu, you call it a Timu take? A Timu take is a real thing now, ladies and gentlemen. Tasha, go ahead and copyright that so you can get your just do. But a Timu like take. That. Yeah, I, a team will like take us the bar. Go ahead, Jalen. I like what Wayne just said. I don't know if you saw that comment. Let's go back. Let's go back. Tatum, Tatum and Brown were a shell of themselves when they faced the Warriors. Now, now, Wayne, you're confusing all of us now because this goes back to experience now, that they shouldn't be a shell of themselves because they've been there before. I'm all confused and ready for, but for war I, on Thursday. I feel like it's like, you know, damn, we won the Eastern Conference Finals. And you look up and you got to play. Steph Curry, Clay Thompson, and Draymond Green. Yeah, in your head, a, a team that, that that had real championship experience. Like you gotta think, like, oh, yeah, that's where experience comes, and you're like, oh, it gives you the jitters. But Look, Mike Tatum was trash in that series too, though. <laughs> I want to because I'm gonna say Mike probably turned it's a, it off. And, after and it's a work. different, it's a different team too, right? Like you had, you know, shooting what from no the threes. Out? You got Luka driving. You got Kyrie driving. They double driving, dish out, you know, swing it out. Like it's it's a different game. Y'all, I can't wait. The, the the law office of Tatum and Brown versus Kyrie and Luka. They looking like Wesley and Woody 2.0 out there on the oh, in the two v two. Not the white man can't jump. No. What his wife say? Ain't no vista, ain't no view, and ain't no vista or no view. <laughs> You're going to get us out of here. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
I digress. I'm gonna have to watch that tonight since Dallas didn't yeah. understand the assignment and give us a game six to watch tonight. So I'm gonna have to watch White Men Can't Jump, one of the greatest basketball movies of all time. Shouts out to Woody Harrelson. I mm, that's gonna be have to. That's gonna have to be like a, a top five question. The that, there we go, Mike. The original white man can't jump because you know it's it's two. I ain't the, talking about the one with that new rapper kid out of out of uh, uh Kentucky, not that one. No, you know Brayson cussed me out for telling him to watch that. He was highly offended. Yeah, who was that? Was that Little Dicky or something? Jack, Jack Harlow. Harlow. <laughs> you sound just <laughs> old. Like, like like Jimmy Dickens. <laughs> <laughs> Jane, we try to we try to sound Gen Z, y'all. This is a tragedy. I'm like, um. <laughs> Ain't no y'all. I know what I'm talking about. <laughs> Tasha, you have a Gen Z daughter. Like, like, you like you in you in the loop. Like, uh, okay, all right. I don't need no whips and chains. I'm sorry, y'all. Y'all, this is this has been fun banter. All right, now, Jalen, I need you to sit up straight and I need you to focus with me on this one because the hate is about to be real, and I'm gonna need Ooh. you to to to. You see how the the the, the monitor is set up. Where it's our side versus that side, so I'm. A, I just. I just want to warn you before we even broach this topic. Don't let me down here because they will. Must be me. Cowboys talk then. Stop it, Mike. It is Cowboys. It talk. gotta be. It they be gotta trying be. to. They be trying to jump me, man. You know what I'm saying? Like we banging in Little Rock. So let's start with this question, and I'm, I want you to go first, Jalen. I want you to set the tempo because those two, I don't trust them in this segment. You said it earlier in your in your opening salvo. Stars are in the, the conference finals. The Mavs are in the NBA finals. The Rangers are the defending reigning World Series champions. Does this put more pressure on the Cowboys to win a Super Bowl, or will they always be top dog regardless? More pressure. I mean, it's like looking at your, your brothers go. One of your brothers, you know, he becomes a doctor. The other one becomes a lawyer. The other one becomes a, I don't know, a billionaire. And you just working at McDonald's. McDonald's called a stray. He said <laughs> Cowboys are the McDonald's team. Pew, I like that. Pew. Are we at least the breakfast? Because they breakfast slap. <laughs> now, if, if it's after 11 o'clock, then the McDonald's is, is nuclear trash. <laughs> yeah, but, I, the breakfast. They're, they're the hot cakes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. All right. Okay. At least that. You've never seen the Cowboys in an NFC Championship game live, correct? Am I correct in, in that? Yeah. Yes, I think. That's correct. Tosh, let's stop it. Stop that's it correct. right now. Yeah. The jokes write themselves. He, he, was born in, he was born in 2000. Like, come on. Y'all, we have a guest that has never seen the Cowboys in an NFC Championship game live. That shit hurts. That's it, really just dog water the whole time. Literal pain. That's that is tragic. That's a long time. That's why oh. I, that's why I watch basketball more than I watch football. <laughs> oh my god, that was my next question. I was like, can the Cowboys sustain this if they're the 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 one dragging up the caboose? Ooh. Like the Mavs are about to win the NBA championship. The Rangers are the reigning champions, and the Stars could win it too. Well, I sent you that Twitter thing, y'all. When I say they was eating the cow bitches up on Twitter, when when Dallas lost, and they were saying they was losing because Dallas with the Cowboys. Oh yeah, because uh, Mike and them they took that picture. Like they, that was they was like, we don't need these evil spirits in our building. That's why we lost. I mean, y'all, they was tearing. They, the yeah, cow they told Kyrie to break out the sage again. <laughs> yeah, they said they said Kyrie needed the sage in that building, man. Uh, that's funny. No, Jay, look at this. Now, Tasha is a San Francisco 49er fan, has been so since I've known her over 30 years now. I've known her for over 30 years. She's always been a 49er fan. She was a yuck, puke 49er fan when I met her back in the late 80s. All right? We go back to crack cocaine. Now, Mike, on the other hand, is a Mavs fan, a Rangers fan, a Stars fan, and an Eagles fan. A Sidekicks fan. fan. FC Dallas fan. And an Eagles fan. Jalen, well, how does this happen in, in Dallas? I don't know, man. I, um, they might have put exactly. something or something. I don't know. <laughs> An Eagles fan with a Mavs jersey on. I respect it. I respect it. You know why I respect it? Why? That means he's a he's a true fan. You tell me he likes every team in Dallas, but when it comes to football, one of the best sports in the world, he likes the Eagles. That shows he's a true there fan. See, I, I can always I can always respect that. 
Uh, now, Jarrell, who actually roots for all of his Cowboys team, all his Dallas teams down here, he says not as much pressure on them other Dallas teams to win. It's not. All of the smoke yeah. is on Gary. Look, it goes. What we have this discussion every damn week mm -hmm. on football season. Yeah. It yeah. is because of old Gerald Jones. Y'all know him better as Jerry, but he's doing his job he, though. He's doing his job. He's increasing the revenue for the team. He ain't got nothing else oh to my, do. That's 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 a backhanded compliment. They, you but know it, it's true. I it's mean, true. but that Quick. is true. He he is making his team the richest, one of the richest teams. Yeah. Behind is he like second behind some of like the the football it's teams? Like New, over? Yeah, it's like New York and uh, maybe the Something Patriots. Like that. He there. he is doing his job, but but by doing his job, he's also putting unattainable goals onto his football team because number one, I'm gonna go on and break his own down. I don't give a damn what you paying Dak. I don't give a damn what y'all paying Micah. Y'all better get C.D. Lamb signed and put, I don't, I, oh, he waiting on Justin Jefferson. Set the market so high that Justin Jefferson going to be like, well, you know, I know Minnesota ain't going to touch this. Let me go on and take what they going to give me. Cowboys and fans. I don't even like the Cowboys. No, I think that's being disingenuous. You hate the Cowboys and you love to see our misery. Now, to your point about the money, what the let, hell does that mean? Let the record show who, Mike, who did I pick to win the NFC least. Well, I can't call them that no more. The NFC East for the la last year. Who did I pick? Yeah, you picked the Cowboys. Look, you about to cause a wreck out here in these cash real streets, Tasha. Damn it. <laughs> you about to cause a wreck. Look, you get Cowboys fans fired up. We everywhere. But to your point about the money, Mike and Tasha, me and Jalen ain't getting no stimulus package from no damn Jerry Jones. I don't give a damn how much money he then makes. Stop buying Give the me product. a ring. Then stop buying the product. I done ran out of beverage. I Hell, it, it, I, look, it, come on the rabbit ears down here in Texas. What am I supposed to do? Not watch America's team? I live in America. I mean, look, I used to work at the Cowboy store. What was that? Oh, yeah. that sounded like a good job. Yeah. And that was that was one of the best jobs, but one of the worst, like, person-to-person -person experience I could ever imagine. Like, oh, my. Uh -oh, we getting some, Ooh, we getting some behind the scenes. Yeah, do tell. We sitting up. I mean, it's just, like. I mean, Jerry Jones is a grandson. One of his grandsons used to come to the store and spend so much money in there. I mean, th throw the little metal card on the desk. You hear it? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The black card. Man, I'm just bags full of stuff. And then you got to deal with hecklers every day. I feel like you weren't getting paid enough to work in that store. It was it was busy every single day. Like, I yeah. think. Jerry Jones was making his grandson got his own merch. That's a man. That's no, wicked. Up, that's called money laundering. That's <laughs> wicked work. This dude. That was a good one, Mike. I hate your ass. That was a good one. That was a good one. Uh, Mike Eagles fans about the product for six. Correct. All right. Correct. Ain't no about no fly Eagles fly. My AP Coulter says, "Don't y'all fret. This is the Cowboys year." Mama Tui just oh. got back from the Sage in the time. <laughs> Yeah, it's see, Mama's got jokes now. Like, you, no, we're getting out of this segment. Yeah, Tasha, because, because, because you got your wide receiver and your one and your top defensive men ain't even in OT ain't going to OTAs, which they don't have to, but they ain't been nowhere near that facility. You got your quarterback out here trying to tap dance for the man because he oh money don't matter. Well, why are you out there playing? You can say money don't matter when you got all the leverage. True. And and if y'all smart, Dallas, you will never let Michael get in that position because Michael will walk on y'all. Michael ain't, Michael ain't going to just stay around just to be no cowboy. If he ain't winning by the time his contract is up, y'all can kiss that goodbye. I mean, and I don't see Dallas doing, even though they got, like, they said one of the easiest schedules, I still don't see them doing much. So just say if Michael was like, yeah, I'm not going to play because I don't think they need to pay Michael this year. I don't think that's the thing. Uh, they can still be, you know, watchable or salvageable with Micah not being there. Yeah, they, they will because we draft well and they won 12 games three straight years. They're right. not like said, you, need to, you need to pay CD, right. throw Dax and the few change here, there, right. then worry about Micah later on. Right. I totally agree. Yeah, keep franchise tagging him because it's going to be less than having a franchise tag a wide receiver, especially with Waddle and all these, these receivers getting deals. And I don't like the deal. You don't like Waddle's deal? Mm. 
See, see, don't get us into no football. I'm trying to get out of this this show. Don't don't do it. Don't don't get us into no football right now. All right, we we, we, we now, okay. Natasha T. Sizzle. Now it's time for our top five, and I want you to give us your power ranking of the top five players in the NBA Finals. We got a lot of great players here. Who you got? Let me pull up. I actually did my homework again. Of course, we're gonna go with Kyrie Irving. We're gonna go with Luca. We're gonna go with Jason Tatum, and we're gonna go with Jalen Brown. The fifth, I'm actually going to have to go with Drew Holiday. Okay. I really think he is a difference maker. Especially on the defensive side of the ball. He always makes the, the defensive play late in the game. He Remember what he did to Phoenix when they won that chip? I like that. Mike, I think we all yeah. have the same four. Who's your five? Yeah, my, my fifth one is uh, Lively. I've just been really impressed with his play. Young talent. What he went like six for six that last game or something yeah. crazy like that. He had a neck injury, got elbowed in the neck, and then just hit the free that throw. Concussion. That was a concussion. Yeah. They tried to take yeah. him out. But I, I like I like Lobby too. Good two good answers. Jay. Uh <laughs> um, I'm gonna go Daniel Gafford. Hmm. And the reason I'm gonna go Daniel Gafford is because I feel like he wins the game. Like he, he's the deciding factor. For the finals, I had him on here because you got to think of it like yeah. this. that man will block ten shots if you give him the opportunity to. Sure will, sure will. He had ten in two games in one of those series. Like I think it was OKC. Um, what what Lively did to Mike's point, what Lively did to Holmgren in that closeout game, they should have pressed charges against child him. abuse. It was that was child abuse. Call Steve Pierce. They should have pressed charges against Lively. Did y'all see that fourth quarter? Those Wayne in five minutes when he was literally getting all of the offensive rebounds. He was no, pushing I was him out of the way. Sorry. Chet Holmgren. But that's, on film. like okay. We're gonna come back to this, but this I have this, I have a question for y'all. Do y'all feel like weight matters? Weight, like body weight and mass matters more in the NFL or in the NBA? This sounds like a trick question. So, Tasha, you go first. You said weight and size matter more in the NFL or the NBA. Yeah. I think it matters more in the NFL. Okay. Um, yeah, for sure. Because in the NBA, who was I talking? I was watching one of these various shows that I watched, and they were like, oh, well, I, I didn't want to put on that weight because it would have taken away my jumping ability. In the, in, the, in the NBA, like as far as them being able to dunk and they're, you know, because you look at, if you look at the average NBA player, they're muscular and they're bigger, they're broader shoulder, but they're not really big. Like you even look at how LeBron changed his diet and yeah. slimmed down, he's still effective. Like you don't, you didn't really need to be that big. You had Charles Barkley who, then he say Moses Malone was like, basically you fat and you need to lose some of this weight. So I think it matters. I think it matters more in the NFL with the with the size and the weight. Uh, but then you're looking again. I mean, you're looking at these offensive linemen, these D tackles. They may be 320 pounds, but they 320 pounds of muscle. They're not the, the blubbers that they used to be. Lamar dropped 25 pounds, to your point, it, 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 to, to maintain his quickness and elusiveness. Mm -hmm. um, I'm going to jump in here because I think Mike agreed with Tasha with, with football. Holmgren, you got to get some weight up on you. You got he's, to. He's too skinny. You're too you skinny. Cannot, you cannot bang with the bigs if you don't have something on you. I mean. And, and like, Derek Live isn't, you know, he's not big. You know, he's not swole. But he knows how to use the weight that he has. Chet Holmgren can't do that. What did I say last well, why week? why not? Big man versus. Or tall man. I love it. Big man. Or tall man, go back and look at the, the timeline when she gave a really good breakdown of big man versus tall man in regards to Carl Anthony Towns. That's a great question. I, I, I feel like you're leading me to say basketball because I'm thinking of Holmgren and I'm thinking of Lively in that specific time with Gafford and how they had no answer for those bigs. Did you see, like, wasn't it a, a, a game they had six or seven straight alley oop dunks? To Mike's point, running the same play over and over. I mean, the over the the, th the only thin man is two <laughs> thin men that have ever been able to really have a game was Tayshawn Prince. They called him the oh uh, the OG, nice, yeah, and and Kevin Durant. Yeah, they are thin. 
but they yeah. are effective, especially, oh my God, KD is just lethal, but they were effective at being thin men, but they weren't called on to be big men. If you're called on to be a big man. You need to be big. See, and that's you can't, be, you can't get pushed out of the, the, the paint by a rookie. You just can't. <laughs> and th- and that that's why I hate Carl Anthony Towns. That is the number one reason why I <laughs> not stay in Carl Anthony Towns. Thank you. I love it. Now, Jay, we always end the show with a shout out. Now, for you, we're going to do it a little bit different because I want you to throw some some uh, social media outlets out there where people can check out your music. They can check out your highlights. Hey, how can we find No Stopping Jay on social media? No Stopping Jay. Uh, all platforms, Instagram, No Stopping Jay. Um, Facebook is under my name, Jalen. Jalen Hare. Um, you ain't been on Facebook in three years. Go right. ahead. With the other Nobody one. else. <laughs> Stop it, Tasha. Go ahead with the other ones. I hate Facebook. No, stop. Jay on Check Twitter. out my MySpace. Facebook right now. We love y'all Facebook. <laughs> Lonely is definitely being coached by Tyson Chandler. Yes. Definitely. Yes, they have very similar styles of mindset. Go ahead, uh, Jalen. Um, yeah, that's about it. No, stop it, Jay on TikTok. And yeah. All right. Mike, who you shouting out today? Oh, yeah, I want to give a shout out to No Stop and Jay for coming on. Glad to have sure. him on. Another Texas boy. Um, I like seeing your highlight reel. So if anyone hasn't seen it, go check them out. Uh, good stuff. Texas old. Do you want me to make the announcement, Paul? We'll do it. We'll do. It. Yeah, we got a big announcement coming, but we're gonna tease that one, okay. and we'll, we'll 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 bring that back. Okay, um, I want to give a shout out to everybody. Uh, to to. Well, I ain't give my shout out yet. Oh, sorry. Go ahead with your shout out. Sorry, I'm okay. sorry. First, shout out to one Miss Pam Greer. Miss Foxy, her Miss Foxy Brown herself, she is seventy five years old, and I need y'all to go look up Foxy Brown. How about we do that? And a, on a serious note, shout she's gonna be my cougar. Yeah. Okay, go ahead. Shouts out to my forever Flotus and my forever Potus um, on the passing of former First Lady Michelle Obama's mother, yeah. Miss yeah. Marion Lois Shields Robinson. She passed on yesterday. Well, I don't know. They just posted it yesterday. And to make it li- um, liven it up again, if y'all haven't seen that video of that idiot who's driving on his suspended license oh, yeah. and trying to be professional, I'm parking right now. I need to shout out this judge, Cedric Simpson, for keeping a straight damn face because the way I would have cackled. That was very, that, um, that, that, that was one of the, and, and, unless you embarrass me moments. That, that no, was a, unless you embarrass he me. He told that man, if he didn't turn himself in by six o'clock, you, you was pretty much done. You weren't going to, they, they weren't going to get that man no bond unless he, t- so shouts out to that, to that judge because his face was, I don't know if the face was, Mm, you you got to be you got to be kidding me. I'm being pranked right now. Yeah. Or was he really just keeping his judge face, his non-judgmental face? He he did well because Judge Maybelline would have would have went viral for a whole different reason. Uh, Langston says, "Shout out to my paycheck because it was really nice to see you for Let a second. Let me hold some. Send me some. Zell it. No, 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 no. The 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 bar was for a second because we know it's the first of the month. Wake up, wake up, wake up, wake up. That was definitely it, boy. Let me." See, that's why I got to that's why I got to proofread y'all before I slap y'all up here on the <laughs> anyway. What you said. I wanna um it really was though. I want to give a um a shout out to the Walton family. Bill Walton is mm-hmm. no longer with us. He passed away this week. I want to give a shout out to um No Stopping Jay for coming through, man. It's been a year in the making, and you are contractually obligated by verbal contract, a la Dion and Dion's double play. <laughs> You are you are contractually obligated to come back during football season. Can we get you on on on, on for that? Oh, y'all don't want to see me around football season. Paul knows what's up around football season. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, okay. No, bro, I don't think you're gonna be ready for that venom. Oh, uh, no. trust me. Who's your football team, by the way? College team. Uh, Texas. Okay. Uh, <laughs> yeah, you what? Second week. Yeah. Oh, so we, oh, okay. So second week, you definitely coming on for Texas versus the University of Michigan. We'll have plenty of banner back and forth between then, ladies and gentlemen. We are going on vacation. One, two, three, Cancun. We are taking off the next month. We will be gone the month of June. We will be back mm-hmm. on July the sixth. We got to go spend some time with our family, all our inclusive friends, resort. Oh, in some. Huh? No, I don't do all inclusive. All inclusive, huh? No. Does that- 
all inclusive resort. What, what does that mean? <laughs> you said Cancun. I said all inclusive, and she said it's she doesn't all about do that. The villa life. Babe. What does that mean? I ain't never been to Cancun. It's all, it's all about the villa life. Now we going to Mexico. We definitely staying in all all inclusive. No, y'all ain't getting me to Mexico down to Mexico. Oh, trust that ain't that I ain't, no, I ain't going to no Mexico. We can go to <laughs> New they, Mexico. They just shot the mayor. A mayoral candidate the other day no, down there. We can there. go to New Mexico. We ain't going to old Mexico. <laughs> I, I said I wanted to do a show in July. <laughs> uh, I seen Queen of the South. Y'all ain't gonna set me up. Right. Queen of the oh, South was at one. Denise, Denise, but you, but we're gonna be back in time for the countdown to kickoff. We're gonna be back in time for the Olympics and the men's and the women's oh, team. We'll wait. be back. I, I did. I forgot to shout out my baby. She uh, will be working the Live Golf Tournament. Okay. Uh, and she also will be working the CMAs for Spotify mm. in some of their production booths. You know, my baby's a she's a producer. Oh, so we got another producer here. Too bad that Jalen is already taken because I would have had a nice about to produce match all, yeah, executive in the, in the producer make. all in the video. <laughs> well, you got worry about him. Well, you did have to worry about him in the video. We're going we gonna to end it right there. Ladies and gentlemen, we will see you all in a month of Sundays. Y'all enjoy y'all summer. We'll see y'all after the 4th of July break. Jalen, good stuff. We'll see y'all. Peace. Jalen, don't log out. <laughs> He's looking like he finna hit.